Trevor Aldrich, thank you for having me here at uh, Patriot Aircraft, and thank you for your service. All signed, eggs. Doesn't. 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 Doesn't eggs. Doesn't. So, tell us about the Patriot Mark II. Uh, this is the Patriot Mark II. I think y'all have interviewed the Mark I in the past, the camouflage, the, that kind of black and gray, the white camouflage one. This is the Mark II, so we took a, a lot of lessons learned from the Mark I, figured out how can we make this airplane better. Uh, and so there's a lot of little details on this aircraft that are just improved. Um, we designed this aircraft to the specifications that I wanted in an airplane. So, for example, we've got a uh, Lycon uh, like IO320 engine that produces just under 200 horsepower. And we have a constant speed prop. Because one of the things with the ground adjustable prop, great, great capability, you can take off super short or you can go super fast. But you had to make that decision on the ground. It took about 10 to 15 minutes to adjust the prop. Here with the constant speed, I could be at a soil competition. I could take off and... You know, lightweight, I can take off at just over 60 feet, and I cruise at 130 miles an hour. You found a sweet spot with a souped-up O320 thing, constant speed. For years, that was sort of a, a niche area for the RVs, and it's getting the best of both worlds. You can take off, sure, but you also have the cruise performance. And you keep the weight light. That's one of the really important things is, you know, this is the original cup had a certain lift profile and a certain, you know, weight that it had based off the, the wingspan. We've increased our wingspan. We've got aluminum. We've got titanium. We've got carbon fiber. Everything in this airplane is designed to be super light so that you get the appropriate, you know, characteristics in the flight handling. And so having the IO320 with a constant speed carbon fiber prop, we get to keep the airplane really light. We don't have to add weight to the tail. We don't have to do other things because it's balanced the way that the cub is supposed to be balanced. I had an opportunity to swing by and say hello to Don and to tell me some of the particulars of the modifications to the engine, one of them being uh, cryogenic treatment to a sort of fact you've got more reliability. And it's just amazing if you're on the high-tech world to understand that that's being added here. But speaking of the tail, your baggage area is so unique in this industry. Could you give us a brief rundown? Well, when you're, when you're going to the backcountry and you're camping, you need space. And, you know, a lot of people will put a, a pod underneath the belly, which is just more drag, more weight, and everything like that. And we realized we have a lot of space back there. So let's create, let's, let's utilize that space. Uh, the top portion of the cub is actually non-structural. And so that allowed us to move that the top frame and create the space. So between the back of, we call it the turtle shell, between the back of the storage to the front seat is seven foot four of space. So it's just a couple of Velcros. You can take that back seat out. And now you have a camper with you. We can store tons of stuff. I, uh, I'll go camping with my son. We can bring coolers, and all the things that we need just stored back there. Uh, you keep the heavy stuff a little bit forward, and, and your CD is no problem. Yeah, that, that was my next question. Yeah, that's one of the big yeah. questions to come up to CD. Now, if you're going to be carrying lead bars, you don't want to have them in the, in the very far back, right? Uh, but as long as you keep the weight towards the front, uh, the design is 100 pounds back there. Uh, I can say operationally, it handles much, much better, you know, much higher numbers than that, no problem. Uh, obviously, anytime you're flying an aircraft with ASCII, you want to be careful of spins. Because that's a really big threat is if you get to a spin, uh, if the nose doesn't have enough weight to fall forward, then you can't get out of it. So that's one of the big threats you want to be careful of. But the aircraft, I've had two people full fuel and the back loaded up and it, it's not a problem. And we've taken this thing, uh, about a month ago, we went to Leadville, Colorado, you know, the highest airport in North America and the airplane was still taking off like 200 feet. It was absolutely, absolutely insane. It was so much fun. Stole competitions on the horizon for you? I've done a few. Um, I'm so I do a lot of backcountry flying, but I haven't done a whole lot of like right on the razor's edge. And so my numbers haven't been as impressive as I would like them to be because I'm not pushing it too hard. Uh, but as I continue to practice this all, I'm excited to continue to get those numbers down. Maybe see you there at Sun and Fun. Oh, absolutely. I was all at right. Sun and Fun last year. Uh, I had just gotten the airplane. I had it flown in about three months because we had just painted the aircraft. It was originally gray. Um, and so I hadn't flown in about three months. So I went to Sun and Fun and. Uh, I was very conservative at Sun and Fun. <laughs> well, good luck to you next time. This absolutely. has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you, sir. Awesome. Thank you very much.